The breadth of the automotive world has a plethora of amazing driving experiences, but some of them are not designed for the driver. Some of them are meant for the person sat back here. We had it all. Every moment was painted in gold. We were made and the world was ours. Untouchable soul. Living life on the edge, no regrets, no control. Dying oh so young. Bentley finds itself at a crossroad, with one foot firmly planted in its future, but another in its past. One part Jekyll, one part Hyde. On one side is their new sporty, aggressive look that came in this century with things like the Bentley Continental GT and the Speed 6 concept we saw this year. And on the other hand is their legacy from the 20th century, where speed and aggression were not the watchwords. Luxury, comfort, stature. And firmly under that description falls this, the Bentley Malzahn. People will sometimes oversimplify the difference between Bentley and Rolls-Royce by saying, you drive a Bentley, you're driven in a Rolls-Royce. But that's simply just not the case. You don't buy a Rolls-Royce Wraith to be driven in it. No one wants to have to have the driver put the front seats down so you can clamber into the back of your luxury car. That's a driver's car. Equally, the Malzahn is a hugely long limousine car. It's designed for you to sit in the back. This car alone, the gadgets it has in the back are phenomenal. The comfort level back there has been as much, if not even more considered than anything up here in front. So to say that Bentleys are driver's cars over Rolls Royces is simply not the case. But this speed, this Malzahn speed, changes things up. It adds that extra power. It gives you that slightly sportier edge on a car that's not meant to be sporty in the first place. And then confuses the hell out of me. Because who's going to buy this car? The Malzahn is hugely popular in China. One of its largest markets is out there but they don't predict that many of these will be sold over there. These are being targeted at the European market. Someone who wants to buy the Bentley you buy if you want to be driven, but who also wants to drive that car. Brass tacks, the Bentley Malzahn Speed, has a six and three quarter liter twin turbo V8 engine up front, delivering 530 brake horsepower and 811 pound foot of torque. That's over a thousand Newton meters. That is a phenomenal amount of grunt. What's even more incredible is that that peak torque is at 1750 RPM right low down in the range and it stays pretty much flat all the way up to 4,000 RPM. This is a different kind of speed. This is a different kind of delivery of power. This is not built for a track, but this is built for the Autobahn. If you get an open stretch of road and the chance to put your foot down, this car will not disappoint. The brakes, however, have got one hell of a job to do. They've got over two and a half tons of car that they somehow need to bring to a halt. And for something this heavy going that fast, that is a difficult job. The hood ornament, which in addition to being a great status symbol, is also the only thing you have to indicate where the bonnet ends, which is usually in a different postcode to where you find yourself sitting. A five and a half meters long, this isn't the easiest thing to weave around small Bavarian towns. That said though, right here and now, I can't think of anything I would rather be in. On the exterior, there's loads of little touches which differentiate it from the standard Malzahn. Like on the Continental GT Speed, there's a rifled exhaust and chrome details around the headlights, which are nice little touches. And if you're down the pub with your mate who also owns a Malzahn, but the standard one, you can point those out as evidence that you have the more expensive and faster car. But unless you're an absolute Bentley nerd, those things will largely go unnoticed. Bentley maintain that this is a driver's car. They maintain that all Bentleys are real driver's cars. But really, if you're buying a Bentley as a driver's car, is this the one you buy? Well, probably not. 
if I really, really want to drive a Bentley, and frequently that feeling does come across me, I would go for the Continental GT Speed for several reasons. In our previous Bentley film, I went into a lot of detail about why I love the VW W12 engine that's in the Continental GT Speed, a phenomenal piece of work. I'm in the minority, most people prefer the V8, but I love that engine. That's not available in this car. It's faster, has a higher top speed, it's faster to 60, and it's lighter enough that the brakes feel like you have more control over the car than this does. Now it's well known that Bentley put huge amounts of detail into their work and go to great efforts to create the best looking interiors using the finest materials and the finest artisan techniques. And that is true for every Bentley from the cheapest Continental GT all the way up. But in the Mulsan, it's taken to that extra level. The quality of the finish is at that premium Bentley style, but every little detail has been considered. Our car has fully loaded iPad desk trays that come out. You have at your disposal a mini office in the back of this car. In fact, if you're in the market for an office, this actually might be a more efficient way of doing business. In fact, we should move the X car office into the back of a Bentley. There are touches on this car that do hint at its more sporty nature, or at least sporty intentions. One thing I've always complained about on Bentleys are the flappy paddles, which have always been these plastic sticky-outy things that are, have been set up for 10 to 2 driving, which always to me indicated that really no one was ever going to use them. They were not in the right place for if you wanted to drive fast. On the speed, however, they're at a quarter to three, and they have this wonderful gnarled metal feel on the back. Now they control the eight-speed ZF gearbox, which is one of my favorite gearboxes. It's absolutely phenomenal. And then the Continental GT Speed, it was unbelievable. And certainly, if you plant your foot in any gear, it drops two, three gears, no problem, in a heartbeat. This is as good as any dual-clutch gearbox you can get from anything from Porsche. Bentley is clearly moving forward. In my opinion, if Rolls-Royce had never taken them over in the 30s, Bentley today would be on a par with Aston Martin or Porsche for incredibly fast, exciting sports cars. But because of that 20th century run under Rolls-Royce, it's a different beast now. And although with things like the Speed 6 concept, which we saw at Geneva this year, there clearly is a drive to become even more sporty, more aggressive, lighter sports cars, there is that heritage that's been brought up over those years that they would be crazy to throw away. You still see that in the finish of all of their cars across the range. The wood, the leather, the effort, the attention to detail is absolutely phenomenal. And they don't want to lose that, and they definitely shouldn't. But the Mulsanne really is a car of its past. Will Bentley continue to make cars like this in the future? Will the audience that loves these ever dry up? Possibly not. But is that a shame? Is that holding back Bentley from really committing to being what it really always wanted to be? There's no two ways about it. The Mulsanne really is a reflection of Bentley's past, but that's no bad thing. That history was built on the tradition of the highest quality engineering and design, but it's not where the mark is going. This, however, the Mulsanne Speed, adds those lessons it's learned in the 21st century to create something that's truly the best of both worlds, where performance and speed have been married with the highest level of comfort and luxury. It might not be the ultimate driver's Bentley, but speed has never been this comfortable. <laughs>